Welcome to the Football Daily. Uh, I'm joined this week by Lawrence and Johnny. We're here to discuss the five things we learned from this weekend's action. Manchester United are title contenders. It's official, isn't it, Johnny? Was it ever in doubt, really? Come on, under my I think it was. For some people, certainly. Well, uh, in eighth place, it didn't look too rosy, but I think it was it was a very conservative game. That was atypical and moist, but I think given Arsenal's form, we kind of needed that, and we were very much more the dogger team, and we wanted it more. We were first at every ball where Arsenal were. You know you've had a good day at the office when you've got three or four candidates for man of the match, so really good performance. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for the boys. I think we, we're still lacking some creativity, and it seemed that we kind of bypassed and navigated the midfield issue by not carrying the ball in midfield at all. Lawrence, most of for the title. I think the reason I put United for the title or put them in with a good chance of it would not really be so much because of United but because of the competition in the league and the competitive nature of what goes on yeah. and there are going to be a lot of surprise results this season mm-hmm. you know you could lose eight games this season and still win the title that's right yeah. which is that's crazy talk in previous seasons mm-hmm. really isn't it mm-hmm. so uh, with that being the case I don't know if it's necessarily that the, the league is, la- is lacking quality but it's become a lot more competitive and that possibly is going to benefit United this season mm-hmm. with the slow start yeah, yeah. Well, surely come the end of the season Manchester United will be there or thereabouts Will Manchester City, Johnny, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this little chat, but they're struggling away from home. We spoke about Chelsea last week. They can't win away from home, or certainly not doing it very often. And City lost again. I mean, they've lost away to Cardiff, lost away to Aston Villa, um, and they lost away to Sunderland, who uh, some people think might go down, Lawrence. Sometimes you see them turn it on and sometimes you don't. So I'm wondering about the motivation for this Man City, Man City side and how well they're going to be able to sustain themselves this season. I still think a lot of that falls down to Pellegrini and being able to keep them fresh, being able to keep that mentality. Quite honestly, I think there's a bit of a focus on Champions League from this Man City team this season. They want to do quite well there. And so uh, pre and post uh, Champions League games, I think you see a difference in their form. The back line certainly has taken a bit of not company being out for so long uh, mm. is, is, a, is a massive miss, no doubt. But that front line shouldn't struggle to score goals, Johnny. Not really. They were all without David Silva, who they certainly missed. A playmaker. Yeah. But I mean, what, what can your excuses be when you've got Aguero, um, Yaya Toure, who's just in the form of his life at the moment? That's right. And uh, Jesus Navas with his pace. And yeah. We saw his and Jekyll's just come on a number Jekyll's of times. Jekyll's gone, before. yeah. Casually bring on the top class striker. Who's exactly. Yeah. Third choice. The more I see City, the more the more they look like very well paid mercenaries who don't know each other, don't necessarily speak all the same language, don't know the Man City culture, um, and I just think they turn up for the big games and not necessarily um, those in the bottom half. Tottenham Hotspur aren't scoring goals. They're just not doing it at the moment, Johnny. Why is that? It's hard to say, isn't it? I think the one the one focus you've got to look at is uh, Roberto Soldado. The yes. from Valencia he's just not really looking at it like he's at the races he's a big burly guy so he should be quite suited to the English game yeah. um, whether or not he's, he's just ex- quite exhausted by the pace of it yeah. that, that could well be the case uh, when it comes to Spurs you know you can create as many chances that you want, as you want like they did against Newcastle and Tim Cook can have a great game well my goodness yeah um, and so you could say they're unlucky but at the same time the, the point has to be made just finish your chances that's right put it where the goalkeeper is not yeah. going to get it and don't give him a chance yeah. and that's what they lack at the moment it's not, not, not necessarily just finishing it's creating chances which are actually chances not just half chances or chances <laughs> mm-hmm. that might go in Southampton are challenging for a European place they are they're three points off the top Johnny are they going to finish in the top four maybe the top five the top six I think not. I mean, it's a very romantic notion. I really like what they're doing. Mm. Fantastic attack and play. But it's a case of if you look past um, those great individuals, they've got Lalana, Rodriguez, Lambert, uh, a great back four, and you know two fantastic holders in Schneiderlin and Wanyama. When you look beyond that, they don't really have a great squad. Mm-hmm. And we all know the Premier League is very much a squad game. Okay. So I think that's where they're going to come and stuck. It'd be unfortunate for them because I think it's a great story. Southampton actually seem to be being quite realistic about this. They're saying three seasons, we reckon we can get in the Champions League. Yeah. So if you set that out as a goal... They're more than on uh, target for that right now, I think. In Italy, Juventus beat Napoli 3-0, brushed them aside. Uh, the second team uh, played the third-place team. Of course, they were first and second last season. Uh, Roma are still top, but Juventus uh, got a bit of ground back there. Uh, Juventus looking very strong. Uh, still the team to beat, perhaps, despite Roma being unbeaten this season so far? Roma are the team to beat in Serie A this season because they haven't lost. OK, they, fair and, enough. And Juve have only lost one game, having yeah. said that. They've, they've got the same amount of wins and only one draw less mm. so I'd say they've been unlucky to not have the, a similar record to Roma this season um, they still play great football mm. you know they are are they going for the third title in a row here I think it's something like I that yeah. so, yeah. the only thing that might not serve them so well is that Roma 
don't have that big European weight around their, on their shoulders mm-hmm. this season and Juve do um, and also they want to be building for the future I think January could be quite a critical time for Juventus this season mm. right, well certainly playing some fantastic stuff at the moment in Serie A thanks very much for watching that's what we've got time for this week thanks to Lawrence and Johnny of course well on chaps excellent stuff uh, do leave your comments below and uh, join us next time <laughs>